What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're back out here on the speed mullet again. Um, still continuing on with the, uh, uh, the drag and drive updates for the car. We're trying to get the thing to where it's a little bit easier to turn around uh, between street and track as well as uh, trying to get uh, the car a little bit more comfortable to drive. So I'm hoping that you caught my last video. Uh, we uh, put some tailpipes on it. Of course, that took an awful lot more effort than I was hoping for. Um, you know, like it's just the way it works out. You know, you think you're going to put together something that's really fast and easy. And I mean, I actually uh, had done a, a whole intro about uh, multiple projects and I just, I mean, we couldn't get to anything else. So <clears throat> today the plan is to get into the, um, the parachute mount. So the parachute mount is, let me, let me show you what we're working with here. So this is the current parachute mount uh, on the car. And this worked really, really well when the car had one of the longer drag week wing or drag wings. Um, so it's got it. Had, the parachute had to be a little bit lower to, to clear the wing and then a little bit further back. And uh, one of the things that irritates me a lot about this is how much um, extra length it adds to the car. Um, so the other thing is, is that as you can see, uh, there's no hitch. So in order to, um, to trailer, you know, put a trailer behind the car, uh, this has to come off and then I've got a hitch uh, that's got to go on the car. Um, the, it's not overly difficult to change this out, but it is an additional step. We're trying to reduce the amount of steps going from driving mode to racing mode. So, but yeah, so like right now, like I would need to take this off, um, put this on. There's a, uh, there's a bolt. Uh, here, we'll dip you down. There's a bolt under, uh, underneath or behind the bumper that gets dropped down. Um, and so, yeah, so we're, but we're, what we're trying to do is we're going to leave this on all the time. Um, so, I mean, this is a bit lighter than this, but again, trying to get to where, you know, we're reducing the amount of time we're spending, uh, changing over from drag to, uh, from drive to drag and back again. So, um, I grabbed one of these, uh, I grabbed one of these like tubular mounts. Uh, I think uh, Rhodes Race Cars is where I got this from. So I would have made this, but by the time I priced out the material to make this, uh, I was actually costing more than buying this. It was kind of already made. So, but it's got the, the frame, it's got some tabs. The piece of aluminum is actually from the inside of the parachute mount. And then I've got, uh, it came with some some pieces of uh, chromoly uh, tubing, uh, and we'll put it um, kind of like so, uh, and we'll get it sucked in a little further to the car so that we're not, we don't have so much stick out, uh, as well as uh, um, this is separate from this part, and then we'll just put a clevis here uh, for the tether. So uh, I think that's plenty to talk about, so let's get into this thing.
All right, well, we were able to get the uh, parachute mount all taken care of. This is all 3 8 inch uh, chromoly, tubular chromoly. Um, and I've got the uh, clevis on uh, the hitch now, so no longer have to remove that in order to um, put the trailer on, so that's nice. Uh, it is going to be a little too tight to put the uh, license plate back in, so I figure I'll put the license plate probably down here on the bumper or something, maybe make a bracket. So. Um, I don't know. We'll get to that when it's time. So, but yep. So the parachute looks pretty good. It's all nice and tight into the um, into the back of the car now. It's not hanging out uh, 15 feet. So that it's just a overall much better look. So I'm really happy with the way that turned out. All right, we got the car turned around and I'm gonna get into some of these other projects. Um, so we've got a couple of strange problems happening with the car. Uh, well, one in particular, um, since I put that eBay radiator in, it it's like it builds pressure uh, when the car is off in the cooling system. So, and I noticed that I guess it was like late summer, maybe early fall, um, the thing would, I mean, the radiator hoses would be just rock hard and um, if I hit the, like I put a, a vent style, um, like a pressure release style cap on it. And if I hit that, then it would shoot, it would shoot all kinds of water up out of the, um, radiator catch can. So I was like, well, something crazy is going on. And I actually had asked some guys on Facebook, uh, kind of if they'd ever seen it before, cause I never had a problem with it before I put this, um, this cheap eBay radiator in it. And uh, a couple guys had mentioned that, uh, and, and it makes total sense, um, that uh, it could be a chemical reaction between um, the water that I'm using uh, and or the coolant that I'm using and this, uh, and this cheap aluminum radiator. So uh, in an effort to uh, correct this, I um, actually had taken the seal off the radiator cap uh, so that it wouldn't build any pressure. And the car has always ran cool enough that I didn't really felt like I needed the protection of, you know, increasing the boiling over point. So I, I was okay with that. But then I noticed that the thing is still leaking, like, which, you know, I mean, I took the seal off. So if it's trying to build pressure, then it's going to leak. So I'm, that's, that's next. I've got, uh, I grabbed another, not as cheap, cheap radiator. Uh, it's a Summit Racing 4-Core, which is way more radiator than I really should need. Um, but hopefully with all of our drag and drive events that it'll keep us in conditions for, you know, hopefully no no uh, boiling over and stuff like that. So um, I think the most grueling event this year for the car is going to, it's going to be in June uh, in the Midwest. So I don't think that the temperatures are going to be crazy, but, um, having this big radiator will give us some diversity. How about that? <laughs> so, so let's go ahead and get into this.
got it, we got the old radiator out. One of the cool things I really like about this setup that I did was that I made it kind of like a cooling pack module. So the old uh, uh, the catch can for the radiator and then the catch can for the vacuum pump was uh, part of the the module. Uh, there was good and bad things about that. Good thing, like everything was nice and located towards the center of the car. Uh, that way, if we had any leaks going down the racetrack, we weren't getting anything under the tire. So that was that's always a concern. We want to make sure that things, you know, fluid stay away from the tires. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, the uh, cooling fan bolted to the shroud. So my hope is that I'm going to be able to re reuse the shroud. Uh, the new radiator being bigger, we might end up making some some kind of an extension strip or something. Uh, so that's kind of yet to be seen uh, how that's going to work out. But I am going to take these off. Uh, as good and clean as they look uh, when they when I first did them, uh, there are a couple of uh, drawbacks that are major in my mind. Um, one, this aerospace components. Uh, catch can is 100% garbage. There's no baffling whatsoever in it. So when the vacuum pump is sitting there pumping crepe case pressure into this thing, it is sweating out of the filter uh, ridiculous amounts of oil. Um, and with the, the radiator cooling pack, I guess you could call it, it has kind of a, a forward lean to it in uh, the car. So all of that oil was just like misting all over the shroud. So um, also when I went to go drain this, uh, just due to the, the, the lean forward and everything else, I would end up with a ton of oil like draining onto the shroud. And I've actually got like, uh, like a, a cooling flap here uh, for helping with airflow going down the highway. And that ends up catching a bunch of the oil and stuff too. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, and I'm gonna put them on the strut bars uh, in the engine bay. Uh, hopefully close enough that we don't have to remake hoses, but I'm pretty sure that this one's going to be short. So anyways, um, so I'm going to get this all broke down and get the, get it started back up on the new radiator and we'll go from there. Stop the music so I don't get copyrighted. Um, all right. So this is our new radiator. I kind of hate that it's polished. I feel like polished radiators just look cheap. Which stinks because it wasn't really that cheap. It was 350 bucks. All right. I, I do like that the that this heater core uh, port is threaded so that we can plug that. I do keep thinking that a heater in this car would be a really smart idea. Um, that'll probably be a, another year. <laughs> All right, let's get the rest of this broke down and see what we got. is maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch thicker on the new radiator as it was on the old one so 
That might affect fitment a little bit. Mostly it's going to affect how I've got the upper radiator support. Yeah, I think what, we're, what I'm going to do, uh, at least initially, is I'm going to go ahead and fasten uh, the shroud to the radiator itself. So it's got this nice lip um, on both sides that I can attach some stuff to. Uh, so on, on you know, the front of the car side and then the engine bay side, there's one underneath the shroud. So I'm just going to uh, drill a couple of holes and I'll tap them for uh, some fine thread machine screws and uh, get those get that secured. I think that's going to be our best bet and then we can we'll stick it in the car once we get the shroud secured to it um, and go from there to see what we're going to do for the tap. show you right now I've got some interference between this fitting and uh, the radiator I think what I may do is I may just lean this like this so it it's a little bit further forward I may end up making a hole either I'm gonna make a different radiator support or I'm gonna end up tweaking what I got so not totally sure yet so I think on it but it's in kind of so uh, I really don't want this to be a big project so we'll see what we can do it'll be kind of sneaking it in without it looking like complete garbage all right false alarm it is in there uh, I've got this is all the way down um, but I mean it's touching it's definitely, but it's like secured in there. So uh, I'll make probably some kind of a strap or something to adapt this. Got to oh. see if we can't. Yeah, so we got that kind of lined up. <clears throat> so we can get the cap off. Looks like everything can be pretty well gotten to. So I think it's actually okay so let me just try and shove this bolt in oh yeah so not really a big deal kind of wish these tabs were just longer ah, that would be the cleanest way would just be to make new tabs yeah i don't know it's lunchtime let me think on that okay sometimes simple is elegant i decided what I decided to do on this was I just put a nut or a bolt with a nut and I've got it kind of wedged in there uh, between the fan shroud and the radiator and it is now nice and solid. So uh, yeah, I think that uh, in this case simple and easy and quick and cheap is easier than anything else. So um, I guess... I think I'm at the point where I should probably put uh, the fan in and then I'm going to lift this thing up and I'm going to try and drain as much of the coolant out of the block as possible. I just feel like since we're concerned about a potential chemical reaction as part of the reason why this thing was over pressurizing, um, it would be a best, just a good idea to try and get as much of the coolant out as possible. Mess 
All right, the other side's behind the starter. So it's gonna be a mess too. Oh, it makes me have to go pee. All right, so we got the new catch can for the crankcase. Uh, well, I guess in this case, it's a, a vacuum pump. So this came from Motion Race Works. Um, boys over there seem to have a pretty good thing going with these catch cans. They're nice and they're billet. Um, they're kind of modular. Um, apparently this does come off. It's got some baffles in there that are uh, pretty good and it's supposed to keep this filter from uh, really like misting all over the place. So that's why we got this one. Um, and got a matching one for the coolant uh, overflow as well. So get this mocked up, figure out where it's gonna go. Okay, so I'm kind of allowing the a uh, hose that's coming off the vacuum pump there to dictate exactly where it ends up. But I think I like that. Um, it should clear the tire no problem. Uh, it's going to be clear of the nose uh, if I want to take the nose off. Um, and then also uh, I can drain without um, causing a big mess. So that's where that's going to go. And then when I get the coolant one, uh, I'll put it over on the other side uh, to make it uh, somewhat symmetrical. Alright, so I got the catch can on for the uh, vacuum pump and it's all set to go. I also got the tab in for uh, the coolant side. Um, so, uh, being this is a street car, we're going to set this up. This is a Motion Race Work catch can for the coolant as well. Um, we're going to set this up as a recirculating style um, uh, catch can. So, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to plug the top of this. It's got a little uh, weak vent right there. Um, so I'll plug the top of this so that we don't have a huge leak if it ends up boiling over. And then we're gonna actually uh, plumb the line from the radiator to the bottom of the tank. That way it will recirculate back into the 
um, into the radiator as needed. All right, guys. Well, I've looked over my list, and believe it or not, I think we're about wrapped up on the winter updates for the speed mullet. So, which is really good because I need to get on to a couple uh, other projects. We're going to get the Falcon back in here, uh, and uh, we're going to do a roll bar um, and a fuel system. Uh, let's see, we got to get the cooling system all lined out, switches, shifter, all kinds of stuff. So. Um, so that's coming up also. So the drag and drive event that we're going to go to in the summit racing Midwest drags is in June, um, early June. It'd be good if we were tested. Uh, so I need to get, I've got a, a little trailer, uh, project that is coming up. I've had this, it's an aluminum trailer that you can get from like, uh, Northern tool or what? Well, that's where I got mine from is Northern tool. I'm sure you can get them from other places too, but um it's just a bait you know just the platform uh for the uh uh for the trailer so we're gonna have to make a, a box of some sort um or heck i don't know maybe we're just gonna put a piece of plywood on it and call it good so it's gonna depend on how how things are going with uh, the rest of the project so uh mom's car needs to come back in here and get subframe connectors we're gonna put all new interior in that car so lots of stuff to do there I uh, got a couple other projects down the road. Um, got my dad's got two cars, um, a uh, an '85 Z28 and an '89 IROC. Uh, both of those cars need some love, so uh, we're gonna get some love for that. Um, also, uh, there's potential for a very very old Walter Racecraft project. Um, from I mean, we're talking from before my wife and I got married. So it's probably been 12 or 14 years since I've seen this car. Um, so that that's coming up maybe. Um, so, but at any rate, yeah, I think this will end this video. So I know it's a little bit longer. Uh, thanks so much for coming and hanging out with me. Um, I hope I get to see you on the next one and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.